for another episode about talking with 48 here, and we are here with... Matthew Ward. Okay. And uh, what got you into filmmaking, Matt? Well, um, I studied uh, theater in um, high school and college, and it eventually just got to the point where I realized, you know, theater is great and all. There's not a high demand for it, let alone would I need a... a college degree to a diploma to make it happen. So I pretty much decided that I was going to drop out and I was going to start working and trying to just, you know, see if I could get in with local players and local theaters and stuff like that. And maybe work my way into a production company. And I ended up finding out that haunts were a really big help for actors that were trying to get, you know, the thrill of it for, mm -hmm. you know, a chance to be able to just act again and with that i you know did three years with a haunt called screen park in lexington kentucky it's no longer it's the funk now they're no longer together um but through that one of the guys that was in charge uh tyler barnett he ended up introducing me to um conrad farah and i started traveling back and forth from lexington to cleveland lexington kentucky mm -hmm. to cleveland ohio and that's really where the love for film came in. I got to touch my first film set. Um, I got to start working on projects, you know, not just as an actor, but behind the camera mm -hmm. and really exploring what production value is all about. So you're not actually from here? You're... No, I'm actually a transplant. Um, mm -hmm. Cleveland is my second home. Mm -hmm. uh, I live in Lexington, Kentucky mainly, okay. but we don't really have a film scene back home. It's kind of budding. It's getting bigger. Uh, but I've been working since 2010 out of Cleveland, so I've watched Lexington's film scene grow. Mm -hmm. And it's still not quite where it needs to be yet. It's not nearly as prominent as Cleveland's. Uh, Louisville's doing really good, but I don't know anybody there. So it's kind of just, I'm just going to go with where my roots have grown into for the last 10 years and mm -hmm. just kind of see, you know, kind of stick with it. And I sure, you know, have been very honored to work on not just Conrad Studio Productions, but 48s and other people's stuff. How many 48s have you done? Uh, this is this weekend coming up is going to be the fourth 48 I've done, mm -hmm. and they've all been with Conrad Studios. But you know, it's just it's a lot of fun, especially with the last two that I participated in. Mm -hmm. We took the the main prize, so it was nice. Pretty cool. What is your primary role when you do it, or do you swap? Well, it it, <clears throat> it it's very different. Um, I like acting a lot. Mm -hmm. It's my main goal is to be an actor. Um, but, you know, you can't always get that. Not every production is going to want a guy who looks like Seth Rogen or Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're not going to always you need a comedic relief, which I can do, like, serious roles. But mm -hmm. uh, that's more my forte is just being myself on camera. And uh, so production-wise, I like to do set management, um, production coordination, uh, assistant directing, and then also directing as well. Okay. So have you, uh, what, what do you primarily like to do outside of the 48? Do you like to do like features or would you prefer to do shorts or have you done documentaries or music videos or any of that stuff? You know, that's a good, that's a good question. I haven't really done that many music videos. I've mm -hmm. only actually been able to work on one and that's for a rapper back home. Mm -hmm. um, and he's been really good to me and my friends who have kind of gotten together to start up a production company with him. His name's Rocky Osiris. Really cool guy. He's like, I'll buy your equipment and get you guys going. That way you guys can work for me. Mm -hmm. That's really the only place in music videos that I've been able to work. Um, as far as it goes, I love doing fun short films, mm -hmm. especially with uh, the Conrad Studios. We like to do these fun little short films. But ultimately, I find myself thriving on feature film sets, mm -hmm. uh, the serious stuff, the ones that really get us going and get us known for what we're doing. And then obviously 48s. 48s are a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It's really challenging and it's nice to try to compete in those atmospheres where everybody's, you know, just running and gunning for their own good, but they're also competing against each other because they want to see if they're the best at it. So the teams that you've been, well, you've only been on one team, but is mm -hmm. there a set structure that you guys like to use? Um, well, I actually forgot. Um, it, I actually did another horror. I did a horror 48 years ago mm -hmm. uh, with another team. It was uh, 
a horror short, and I worked on that as an actor. So yeah, technically this would be my fifth. Okay. Forgot all about that. I was, I, I was asked last minute to come in and work on it, so I just hmm. kind of slipped my mind. Just like that. this interview. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it was pretty cool to be able to act on that one, but I have gotten to like get in there and background act on other ones, but um, like your structure. Is, do you guys do it the same way every time, or is it is it based off of the story that you write? Do you, do you film them in order? Do you have like? Well, this is crazy. Like you know, it, it, over the years since you know we did 2014, then we did 2018, 19, and 20. Our structure has like you can see where we really learned how to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, the first one we tried it out. We were just like doing the best we could, and the structure kind of we took. A break from that started learning filmmaking a lot more seriously so that way we could try to do better um, and the structure really came into play in 2018 when we were literally trying to get things down and the last two have been the same structure almost like we write shoot and then we edit while we shoot and we just finish it up so you so edit along with it. yeah we edit along with it and we got somebody you know that that guy <laughs> whoever's doing it they're painstaking like doing it like constantly and I, that's the one person that's really the MVP is the editor mm -hmm. you know they're a big part of it so I could never do that it'd be difficult for me to be able to do that much editing in one period is there a, a genre that you haven't gotten yet that you've always wanted to do as a free eight? you know drama is a lot of fun um, but you know we got family film one year that was interesting it was really difficult to try to make it friendly to families, you know, like figure out how to get in there. But I think if I were to do one, I like Fish Out of Water or... I like that one too. Yeah, Fish Out of Water would Always be fun, fun to do. Yeah. yeah, it would be pretty interesting to do that. And then also, you know, just a musical, you know? Like to you get want to do music? music? Yeah, Everybody dreads music. that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm a theater guy, you know? Yeah. I, I originated in theater and yeah. that's my love for the stage and, you know, acting is a part of my life. and. You know that musical theater is one of the biggest elements of stage production and hmm. that's you know it would be fun to see if we could pull off a musical and honestly you know i think it'd be funny to see how it goes because we would probably be ham it up and making a comedy musical you know just have fun with it what um what was your favorite 48 that you've done do you have a favorite yes um the best 48 i've worked on you know the last two have been just so rewarding um, I produced, uh, I didn't work on, but I produced uh, The Unseen. Mm -hmm. That was the last horror one that we took, but I didn't get to work on it. But the last two I worked on, I think the best one I worked on was Inseparable, for okay. sure. Because, you know, we had a kid actor who was doing his thing. And, it, you know, people say don't work, like the last two that I worked on, we worked with kids. And they say, there's two things you don't work with, dogs and animals. Or Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. There's two things you don't work on, and that's with kids and animals. Mm -hmm. You don't work with those. I have found working with kids has been so much easier than working with adults because mm -hmm. they they actually want to listen. It's interesting to them. It's intriguing to them. It's entertaining. It's like they love it. They're enthralled in it. And we get pizza on set that day, right? What? And you get pizza on set that day. Oh yeah, no, and like the kids are <laughs> they're they're loving it and they're a part of it, especially the ones who come in on the 48s because. Those kids want to act, and they mm -hmm. come in there wanting it, so they're craving to get on on film, and you know, cool. It's nice to work with kids. I say inseparable for sure because you know we went from two for twenty into inseparable. We knew we had this drive. We enjoyed two for twenty, but inseparable is kind of where we amped up our team. Mm -hmm. We had thirty people on set. It was absolutely like breathtaking with the final cut and everything, you know, I felt it in my bones. It's like, we're going to do it again. Like I knew in my heart that we were going to win again that year. And it's like, we did it. It was like just the whole from beginning to end. It was just surreal. And you got to go to film with Palooza then, right? Yeah. Um, I didn't get to go to this past one because Rotterdam was a little bit, uh, complicated because I was going to try to go and then COVID started coming up and they were talking about, Oh, epidemic and possible quarantine. So that really didn't, play out to my advantage but I did go to the Orlando film of Palooza and that was really cool uh got to meet so many people from all over uh I actually met the winning team mm -hmm. before they won be because they were at the club for uh, after party 
one day. Now they had these awesome beards. And I was like, hey, guys, like, I love your beards. Like, Where are you from? Them. And they were like, France. And they ended up winning it. And it was really cool. They came over and high-fived us when they won afterwards. And it was really cool to see, to meet them and then see them win it all. You know, I wish we would have won it. But, you know, everybody has that hope. But it was nice to see the, the humbleness of those teams just kind of work together. Everybody acted like it was one big mixer. Mm-hmm. And not one big competition. I didn't see anybody turn up their noses to you when you talked to them. Everybody wanted to meet each other. Uh, the Orlando is just awesome in general because you got all the stuff going on with, you know, tourist spots. And it's really beautiful down there. You know, we, we got to party it up every night, you know. You got to see the best of the best. Yeah. Like all over the world. And I got to go to my favorite pizza buffet, which doesn't exist up here anymore. So it's, it's like win-win. <laughs> <laughs> So if you could change anything about the 48, you know, to Ooh. make it better or, you know, make it more interesting, what would you do? Oh, that's, that is a very, I, I wouldn't know the first thing to say about that mm-hmm. because I feel like learning how to compete in a 48, you really adapt to what you're doing. And there's not a lot of changes that I personally think need to be made mm-hmm. because I'm more of like, go with the flow and just like adapt to it. Okay. And when it comes down to it, I think they're doing it really well. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I would change personally. You know, I think the system where, you know, maybe figuring out a way to, to where, you know, LA has 600 teams facing off against each other when Cleveland only has like 30 or 40. Mm-hmm. I think finding a way to make sure all teams are inclusive and have more of a chance at getting their video or their movie you know, shown or compete, because it's really hard to think about those people in LA that are competing against 600 teams. And then we only got 30 or 40, you know, it doesn't, it seems a little un- un- unweighted. It would be, a, yeah, that'd be a long thing to sit through if you went to all those groups. Oh man, all those screenings would be a nightmare. <laughs> I couldn't even think about it. So, you know, finding a way to, Dude, that's why I'm interested in seeing how the global 48 works out because it's a little bit differently structured. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, I was seeing where it's like you fall into a category and compete against that category and then there's wild card teams and stuff like that. I think that would be interesting to see how it plays out. I feel like everybody has more of a chance. Hmm. Um, do you have any do's and don'ts like you could suggest like this, this, this will never work. Don't ever try this if you're doing a 48. I would say the biggest don't is don't try to have too many characters because if you have too many characters in your story then you have to think about how much time you're gonna have to spend getting those scenes done and like just, it kind of makes it a little yeah. bit more complicated you don't want to over it you want to find ways to like not too many scene locations not too many characters you know you can have like plenty of people in your film but it's just like once you start getting into that it starts to become like really tough to get done in 48 hours Mm-hmm. But uh, as far as dues, like definitely have fun. Like th- that's the biggest part of the forty eight is, you know, like everybody's running around and they're doing it, but everybody's smiling, they're laughing, they're cutting up, they're happy to work with each other because it's a competition. But we're having fun with it, mm-hmm. and that's the biggest part about it. Is like you know, at the end of the day, the reason the forty eight exists is to be able to do what we love and have fun with it. And who knows, you may end up winning an award, getting mm-hmm. somewhere. You're hoping to get a 48 team um, in your hometown then, too, right? Yeah, yeah. Where I'm from, Lexington, Kentucky, Louisville, and Bowling Green. No, not Bowling Green. Paducah. I'm sorry. Paducah and Louisville have a team, but Lexington's the second biggest city in Kentucky. And we, yeah, we're an hour and a half away from Louisville, but we're really big. And I think there's a lot of filmmakers that are missing that opportunity because it's not in their town. Well, maybe that's one thing you could change about the 48. You want to get it. Yeah. A, a, more teams in yeah. in you know, second biggest cities, you know, like mm-hmm. Cincinnati, Columbus, and Cleveland. Those three have a 48, so. Pittsburgh and Michigan, too. They're yeah, all it's all right in the area. So mm-hmm. the more we get down there, because once you get to Kentucky, it's Louisville, Paducah, Nashville. Mm-hmm. And that's literally covering a big span of mileage. So it's like trying to get more in, like, the littler cities in Kentucky would be pretty cool. So that way I could, you know, eventually have my own team. Yeah. You know. Do you have any uh, projects coming up that you want to plug? Uh, Shades of Red. We just filmed that. Okay. It was really cool. It was an interesting take on a classic fairy tale, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I got to do 
do a little cameo, mm -hmm. if you will. And it was really cool to work with some old people from 48s again. Uh, work with Conrad, of course. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I just celebrated 10 years with the company. So it's like always fun to work with, you know, a, a good friend that you've known for a long time. So this is uh, the 20th year of the 48. This is 20th year. That's awesome. It's cool. Well, all these milestones happening. Mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, as far as anything else, we've got some other projects that are on the back burner that mm -hmm. need to be finished uh, on my part that I've directed and just working to try to get those done. So as soon as I'm able to, like, you know, I'll make sure that you guys hear about it. Do you have any uh, websites or anything where people could see your stuff? Um, you can check out our stuff on YouTube, Conrad Studios. Um, I actually acted in Fighting the Sky. It's on Amazon Prime. Uh, we've got some other films on Amazon Prime. Uh, you can also check out the Vimeo stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Conrad Studios. As far as anything else, I've worked uh, on a couple other features of uh, the Good Journey, which is a Christian film that was shot in my hometown. I worked on that. And it's actually got some pretty cool people attached. That's on Amazon Prime as well. Um, but other than that, it's just kind of, those are the places you can check out. I'll put all those links in the comments below. Yeah, for so, sure. But thanks for coming out. Hey, no problem, Ron. Thanks.